three reasons business people fail with video shorts and what you can do about that. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 304, and you can get all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, feeling joyful? I am very joyful. How about you, Matthew? I am joyful as well. Plus, it's going to be a great topic today. It is, and this is a fun topic for me to talk about because of the success that we've had with it. But I really do feel there are three reasons why business people fail in creating short content. We're going to focus on short content, and here's what they are, and then I'm going to break them down. So the three reasons people fail is one, a fear factor, two, no content plan, and here's the biggie, number three, inconsistent posting. Okay, so we're going to break this down and give you some tips on how I overcame some of these issues, okay, uh, what we do to stay on track with it, and then we're going to do another vi- another podcast, maybe two, where we'll get into the technical how-tos, how we do our shorts, okay, how we do video shorts, and we'll get into all of that, but today I just wanted to be able to come from this place of those are the three reasons why most people don't do it. Let's talk about how you could decide to do this because for me and my business with Cosmo here in Las Vegas, we owe in, we're now in our second full year and I would say 90% of all the business that we're getting is because of the videos that we post on TikTok, on Instagram and on YouTube. Okay, on Reels and on YouTube Shorts. We're getting business off of those. We started on TikTok before a lot of people were on TikTok. TikTok's uh, harder to get a, f- a following now, just like all social media channels uh, eventually get to a place after about five years, but you still can make an impact because there's a lot of people in your market that aren't doing this, okay? So let's talk about the fear factor. And this is limiting beliefs, common issues. I had the same issue initially, even though we've been doing tons of video, you and me, Matt, but in the, even back then, I had the thing that went into my head that says, I don't like how I look or sound on video. Do you remember that when we first started recording? I do. And then I had to come to a place that said, um, this is how I look and sound, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Meaning like there's always people, I was this way too, like when I lose 20 pounds, when I get at this or I do that, then I'll go do the video. And I'm like, hello, if I was to go meet a client today, this is what they're getting. So just accept it, right? It's just like the old picture on the business card thing. It's common. Uh, You'll hear people say, I'm not, I'm really not good at video. And here's the thing. I'm not trying to convince you that you should do video because guess what? If you do not like it, then don't do it. This is for people who say, I really want to do it what's getting in the way and we're going to walk through these three reasons and how to overcome that so you might say i'm not good at video it's too difficult to learn that's the other one i'm not techie i don't understand how to do the editing Um, i don't think i look good on something like that is going to be in your limiting belief so you're gonna have to get past i can't help you with the i don't look good okay or you're just gonna have to get rid of that one okay however here are some solutions if you're worried about the technical part Two solutions. One, you learn. That's what I did. Okay. I already had some experience in doing long form videos, doing our podcast, doing YouTube videos, recording training. So I was comfortable because of the experience that I had, right? I was comfortable going to a short form video, but it was a learning curve. Mm -hmm. So you have to do it enough to get good at it that you feel comfortable. That's just the bottom line on that, right? But I did in the beginning, it was a lot to learn and I I needed to go learn how to do the editing and what to use. And so I chose to do it because I like it. If you don't think you can do that or don't want to do that, because maybe it's not the best choice for you to do it, because it is time consuming, then you need to outsource it. You hire somebody to do that. You know, what's great for Cosmo and I is that we supported each other, right? He taught me a lot on how to do the editing, but we helped each other with creating the videos because we would get together and we would write scripts and we would do it. And and then you're doing it with someone else. So maybe having somebody help you, maybe having another agent or another person in your life, maybe somebody in your life, like a kid or a family member or something is really good at this. People, the young people are really good at editing and uploading. So maybe you hire somebody to do that. So that doesn't need to be 
a problem. You can figure out a solution if you don't know the technical part. Either you learn, there's tons of videos, every one of these programs has how do you use this app, you can just learn. I personally like it, right? How about you, Matt? You you learned how to do everything. With yeah, the, absolutely. Uh, and actually, I, 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 have watched, I have watched more video on things uh, regarding uh, SEO and tags and all of that kind of stuff on uh, about, you know, doing short videos. And I have ever watched any, tw- any, any other tutorial videos. I just really, really find it fascinating because you, you can learn so much and there's so much to learn too. So yeah, exactly. Right. You're, you're pointing things out to me in the, like the YouTube, uh, studio or the, mm-hmm. an, the analytics and, and so forth, which is what something you need to get into later. So you can understand what's working, what's not working. Right. So last thing on the fear factor is don't outsource your social media, your videos, meaning like you're not in them. Like there's a lot of companies that go hire us and we'll come out and we'll do the videos and we'll post this. It's not going to work like you think. Okay. I'm not saying that you can't get some social media posts that you put on like your Instagram page, but if you're going to do reels, videos, short videos, you need to be the star. Yeah. It's you that's branding. So you need to be in the videos as much as possible or your voice is coming over on the video. You have to be the talent because you're trying to get this goal. This is the goal. This is what happens for us. Your goal is to connect with qualified people that want to buy and sell, in our case, buy and sell real estate, right? And they, you want to get, to get them to know, like, and trust you. And that is what has happened for Cosmo and I is people call us. We will do, I'll teach you the other things that we, that we do in, pre, in upcoming podcasts about, you know, just don't post. You've got to interact just like on all social media. You've got to yeah. get people to engage. You've got to answer comments. There's all these things you can do to start a conversation before somebody's ready to pick up the phone and call you. But what we get with everybody we sit down with and do a consultation, I'll always say, how'd you find us to see which platform they came from? And they will inevitably say, I have been watching you for three months, six months, all last year. I've been watching you for a year. I just never commented. And we finally decided we're going to come here. And that's why we called. We like what you guys are all about. We like, we feel like we know you. They literally almost say, we know, like, and trust you in so many words. Okay. That's the goal. That's the upside. If you embrace doing short video and you get good at doing it, even if you sort of suck in the beginning, we all suck in the beginning, then you get better at it. It's just like the first time you're calling expires or for sale by owners or whatever, until you get practice it, you're, you're, you're not really good at it, right? You don't become the master. So that's number one fear factor. Get over it. There are solutions. If you're going to choose to jump into this video. Now, make no mistake, video is not for everybody. I'm not trying to convince you to do it. And it does require an effort, a daily effort and time. It's maybe a little bit more labor intensive if you're doing it all yourself and you've got to fit it into your schedule. So it's not just like go out and throw a little video together. There's a lot that goes into it, as you'll see as I go along here today and in future podcasts. So the second reason business people fail with short video is no content plan, which is what I was just alluding to, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have to do to start, and you can always refine this, is start coming up with things that you like to talk about, that you're maybe passionate about. And I just put in our show notes today, you ultimately need to decide on your content pillars. Let's call it that. What kind of content? So I'll give you an example of what, what we have found works for us. We do a lot of home tours because we have a lot of new homes also resale. Cosmo will do a market update, a weekly market update where he likes to talk about the numbers and that appeals to a certain audience. And we'll get feedback about that when we talk to people. And what really has done well for us is area tours, meaning five reasons to live in Caden's master plan community or the pros and cons. And we'll talk about what's not good about an area. People have told us, we watch your videos because you're teaching us about all the areas. And you're also pointing out things that people don't like about theirs. No place is perfect. Okay. I mean, you know, we've done pro, you know, five reasons not to move to Las Vegas. Okay. The honest reasons people actually like that you do those things. Okay. So that's our main content pillars. And then we'll also do some really short videos sometimes on fun things like what things Cosmo might be doing with his family. They just went to the water park or they ate at this great restaurant. I went to a sporting event. We post that stuff too, because that is saying, it's what it's like. To, basically, our channel is ends up being educational, 
about real estate, how to buy and sell real estate. There's some of that in there, but it really is consistent content on homes that you can buy, what all the new home builders are looking like and doing, and then what what are what are all the areas? Because people, if they're coming from out of town, don't know your neighborhoods, and they go online to YouTube in particular and look for people who do those videos and they sometimes choose those people and that's exactly what happens to us so you know, we talk jane o'brien we talk about becoming the local market expert all the time and this absolutely is what does it right so i mean not only to not know the numbers and what's happening in the yeah. market as far as prices and, and interest rates and all that but no to actually freaking know the area so it's but crazy. you could have a niche too you could be like yeah. the person who talks about a certain area of your town don't try to be all things to all people or maybe okay. you're the condo king or queen or you're you know, beachfront property and that's your niche. So, but the whole thing is you have to like what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. I know some people do really well cause they're foodies and they have found a way to blend food reviews and food stuff with cool places to go. And then also talk about real estate. Interestingly enough, I don't know if that's for everyone. It's a unique thing, but you just never know, right? So anyway, new builds, uh, resale. I'm just listing a few things I just mentioned, right? Neighborhood and, 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 um, communities you could do day in the life people love behind the scenes that's a, something that you can also post uh, things that you're passionate about like if you like hiking you know that's what i was just talking about like the foodie or if you're into hiking or sports or i'm prior military and sometimes i'll bring that in and it'll attract the person who's also a veteran right so you get the idea but things to do in your area what it's like to live work and play in your area obviously the real estate content's important what's happening in the market and we've done through and we've created a playlist of like how to buy a home in las vegas and it's like a 20 part series it's like 20 small videos okay and what to do when you sell your home the difference between buying new and resale so there is endless things that you can post and there and sometimes is the problem people get overwhelmed so you just have to decide i'm going to do these things I'm going to start with some home tours and talk about what's happening in the market. And, and every time I'm out somewhere, I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to add some content about things I like to do. It can be as easy as that. So, Jenna Brian, you, you you have about ten different uh, content ideas or pillars you put you put on there. Don't forget, everyone, over on our freebies page, we have about one hundred and forty nine other one hundred and forty other uh, uh, video ideas. Uh, we have a whole download that's got one hundred and fifty video content ideas over on our freebies page at wbnlcoaching.com. So go download that. That's today. Awesome it's inspiration. Forgot about that. We did put that together a while ago, and then yeah. there's probably another hundred more. But the idea is the idea is to kind of have some themes, you know, like content uh, themes, perhaps, or yep. some people will do like a, a Wednesday update, or you know, you can even get that crazy with it, right? And so people consistently do it. And then there's so much more to this. You know, you could go live. There's all kinds of things we'll talk about as we do more on this series about short video. Now, it's one thing to come up with the ideas, but the key to the content having uh you know having a content plan is you've got to plan it okay so you can't just wing this so we do content creation it's on our calendar it's in the morning and cosmo and i just talked about how we want to get back to getting up earlier both of us because we you know we kind of went through the summer vacation and yeah. took a little bit of a slowdown it was hot here and so forth so we want to be able to get all our content creation for the most part done before 10 o'clock every day, which might mean him and I scripting stuff out. So this is how we do it. We plan what we're gonna do together. He'll do market updates. I'll work on some other things and we're doing this today actually. So there's things that we can do without having to get together. And then we will, we have gotten really great at writing scripts and we have used ChatGPT. ChatGPT, it GPT is a really great tool to use when you're wanting to come up with uh, just asking it, you know, write a one minute script on this topic. Okay. Uh, I've gotten all kinds of ideas that I've taken and then I've run with it and made it better and put it into my own words. So definitely use some AI tools out there to help you. Right. But we have a script drive and we just literally we we have active scripts then we move the active scripts over to an archive scripts because sometimes we go back it's a year later now and we're going to go back and do an update on a community that we talked about a year ago and we want to see what what did we do we can go find the video but we can we also have the script that we could take and and rework it right or or add something fresh to it or we'll say something like it's your 2024 update on sky canyon you know in las vegas mm -hmm. so so key is planning the content out and 
deciding where it, you're, where you're going to go get things done in your week. Okay, so can I record some stuff in the morning right here in my home studio? Do we need to go out in the field to get some content? Uh, so we use Google Drive for all of that. Okay, and I want to talk next, finally, here, number three, continuing on with this, with the how to fix inconsistent posting, okay? And that is really the biggest reason. After people get over their fear, and then they come up with what they say they're going to do, what happens is things get in the way because it yeah. it happens to us too. We'll get busy with clients. If we had a really busy June with like six closings. We got off track on posting because we were just busy every day. And guess what happens when you're inconsistent with whatever your lead generation activity is? If it's holding open houses, it's networking, it's calling, it's whatever it is you do. If you stop doing it, your pipeline dries up. All right. So, and in social media, since as long as we've had social media, I remember first like Instagram. I remember when it was Facebook for me first, then Instagram. And I was all about it. I was a broker and I was all about learning about it and teaching the agents how to do it. And then I realized it's a lot of work. And mm -hmm. I had, I was busy as a broker and I had the intention. I had a game plan that I was going to post daily, you know, and it doesn't happen. What happens is people get excited about a new idea and they'll, I'm going to go start an Instagram or a TikTok or whatever. And then they do a couple videos and then they don't do them anymore. Right. I mean, just go look at most real estate agents, social media, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now they might hire somebody to do some other type of posts and content, pretty posts on Instagram. I, it doesn't work unless you're in, in there and you're doing it all the time. So here's the deal. You got to post two or three days. I mean, two to three videos a day, five days a week. You really do. You, you can't do one a week. This this is not going to do lead generation for you if you just post one at one a week or once a month. Forget it. That's like holding one open house. I held one open house consistently per month for five months and I have no business. Well, what if you held an open house every day? Can you imagine? How about just three days a week? That's the idea here. I mean, it is. I talk about it all the time on our podcast and in coaching. I don't care what it is you do. You have to do it consistently every day. And if you have a day-to-day -day that you're busy because you have four clients, tomorrow, post more. Okay? Get caught up. Uh, and the way that you do that is by having your content pillars, having scripts. So I want to talk about it. You have to put it in your schedule. You have to have a, some type of content creation tool a marketing calendar, if you will, you have to work it in that you're working on the scripts and writing it all out and planning for the week where you're going to go out and maybe get some videos versus just do it in your house in the morning because you can do a green screen kind of thing or whatever. And then the key here is you, well, a couple things you could you could basically fit it into your weekly schedule. You could also batch content. I'm, I'll jump to that for a second. You could block out a half day or two half days a month and say, and then get your work done, script the videos out, especially if you're hiring somebody to help you film and do the editing, like they're going to film you doing it. If you do the work to get the content ready and the scripts ready, you could say from, you know, eight in the morning till 12, I'm going to knock out eight, 10 videos. And then you can either do the editing and save them in your drafts, or you could hire somebody who does that part for you. So there are lots of ways to make this happen, but the whole thing is you have to be ready, have the idea of what you're going to do, write your scripts, and then put it in your schedule and go do it. The other thing that I do all the time, and we do that, we don't do a day for that. We basically do this. Once a week, we try to get together and knock out four videos. So we do it weekly. Okay. And then we have our game plan for what we're going to do for the rest of the week. And the goal is to, for us now is to get back to three videos a day between the two of us. We want to get at least three videos up a day, five days a week. Sometimes we'll do it on the weekend as well. And maybe one or two. So what I have a mindset that I've developed over the years now is when I'm out and about, I'm always looking for that would make a great video. Or for example, I showed homes yesterday and 
uh, and we also, I met with one of my team members, Mike, and we did a video on five reasons to live in this new community. He scripted it out. We got together. So this whole game plan works with our team members. He's great at doing that. He comes up with the ideas. I get together. We'll go back and forth and do the video. I'm going to edit it today and post it. I needed to go by the water park because he talked about this place happened to be close to the Calabunga Bay. And I didn't have any video on that. So on my way home, I knew that where I was showing homes, I knew it was in this area. I stopped and I got video. So I also will plan that like if, uh, if I'm going to go out and show homes today, is there a community? Is there some place that I could go before or after my appointment to get some video? Then that is the only way this is going to work for you. Otherwise, it's just a great idea. I really want to do video. I've run out of time. And it's just because you haven't scheduled it. You don't have a game plan. And that's how you have consistent posting through scripting, through putting it into your calendar and adopting this mindset of this is your friend, this phone. I have so much in here every once in a while. I have to pull it all out. And even though I have it uploaded, I'll delete stuff eventually because I know it's uploaded. But, but then we create b-roll that we can access later because we're going to talk about that at some point in the future that mall or that shopping center or that park or whatever it is and you don't have to necessarily go out and get video you can actually build yourself a little library of clips that you can use right but i'm always putting stuff in my camera roll photos images video that i know i'll be able to use because i have a game plan this week of the three videos i'm going to do right mm -hmm. so it's just as easy as that it's it's it is kind of easy it's just time consuming right it's not the difficulty is always in getting the execution of the game plan right so there you go with that and i want to give you a little action plan all right this is your action plan if you're like all right jan's fired me up today matt jan do the video i can do the video right now, one of the things if you're following us that we discovered, and we'll just throw it out there, is if you're doing long form video, you could use this program we have that called Opus Clip, mm -hmm. which takes your long form podcast like what we do, or if you if you're into doing long form videos, for example, and if you're not already doing this, this 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 AI tech will take your video, your 30 minute video, and break it into about 15 to 20, uh, however long segments that you want, which is yep. what we're doing, right? Uh, yeah, that thing has been that thing has been awesome, and then you know it's you in your long form video, and it's a way to get additional content. But again, you have to have long form content to do that. So I digress. So if you are, and again, I'm talking about short videos. If you are like, I'm going to go do this. Here's your here's your action plan. Number one, you say I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, wow. uh, you you decide if this content creation is for you for video. And here's what I want to say to you. If you go, no way, I do not want to do this. It's not for me. That is absolutely okay. This video wasn't for you. And a future one we're going to do is just not for you. It's all good. But what I will say, I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it one more time. Whatever it is you're doing to generate business for you, even if it's paying for leads, you've got to do that every day. If you're paying for leads, you've got to follow up with the leads every day. And have conversations. If you're going to get business from farming, uh, expired, FISBOs, open houses, whatever, you got to do it all the time. You just don't do it occasionally. So you're in. Awesome. Here's the next step. Just start recording videos. Okay. Start recording videos today. And you could decide on what platform. We'll talk about that next uh, podcast. I'm recommending that it depends on where you are. We'll talk more about that. But where do short videos go? Instagram and Facebook Reels, they can go on TikTok and they can go on YouTube Shorts. You can also post them on X or Twitter or whatever the hell that's called now, and uh, <laughs> uh, LinkedIn even, okay? But you figure out what platforms. You can put them on multiple platforms, but you just need to practice. So practice. If you don't want to publish it, don't publish it. Record a video on your phone, share it with somebody and get some feedback. The more you start practicing, the easier it's going to be. So start recording uh, and then start with simple videos. So once you're a little bit comfortable with all of that, start with simple videos. Don't jump into I'm going to get drone footage and do this and I'm going to do all this crazy editing and overlays. That's the technical part you start with. You got a little you get your phone, put it on a tripod, hit record and start talking to the phone. Write a script and talk. Okay. 
Hi, Sheldon. Uh, and that, and so you could just do, I call that the talking head video where you're right there and just, you know, check your lighting. We'll talk about the technical stuff in an upcoming podcast, but lighting and audio and uh, are, are, are important in your, but your phone, your smartphone's got an awesome camera. Yep. You don't need any other camera equipment. Just use your phone because you do want it on your phone because you need to post from your phone if you're going to do the posting. Okay. So just start. And that is where you, decide maybe you decide by doing that i'm in i'm gonna learn this i'm gonna overcome my fear i want to generate leads that people are calling me because we're posting great content i want that then this is what you start with this today and then we'll do some more on the how to's and the technical parts so upcoming podcasts i want to cover recording basics what equipment do you have to have to really be great and it's really just a microphone and uh, a gimbal and a couple other things like that not expensive all for a couple hundred bucks you could have everything you need to go with your phone and then um just the tips of what we've learned on editing and and posting and point you in the right area recommended apps we'll go over all that in a future podcast okay good stuff i'm telling you we've been posting all our, our shorts on youtube now since about middle of january middle of february mm -hmm. beginning of february I think we've missed maybe only a couple of days that whole entire time. And it has really increased our, our subscribers. Uh, and I, I mean, you know, our views, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's pretty amazing. And we've been primarily just reposting, reposting long form video. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's been, uh, it's been fun to watch that. It's been fun to watch the analytics on it too. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a couple yeah. of uh, podcasts coming up too. So awesome. Hey, uh, I want to remind you again, if you want to get to a little spark on some, um, uh, content ideas, go over to our, our uh, freebies page at WBNOCoaching.com and download the 150 video content ideas guide. A lot of good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if uh, you want to, you know, have the, the detail of, of uh, what we talked about today, go over to our show notes at WBNOPodcast.com. This was episode 304. So what else, John Ryan? That's summer's it. Wind, summer's winding down. Uh, it's still three digit hot here in Las Vegas. Mm, well, I don't know yeah. when it's going to calm down, but uh, I'm ready for that. I have to tell you, it's been a hot summer. Yeah. It's been a hot summer. It has started early. Exactly. Uh, what? Oh, wait a minute. What am I saying? It's only 98 degrees as I look oh, at my phone right Well, now. there you are. Practically. But the high today is 104. Oh, it's cooling down. We're going to be just in the hundreds all week. All right, well, and then yeah. next Saturday, 95 degrees. Woohoo! Cooling off. <laughs> That's so sad. But listen, the humidity is, it's been a little humid because I think we've had some, you know, it's the monsoon season here, which is funny because we just get a little bit of humidity and occasional spit of rain. Um, but it's cloudy. It's a little cloudy. So it's a little muggy. But for here, mugginess is nothing compared to the East Coast, right? Anywhere on the, yeah, east of the Mississippi River. All right, yeah. everyone, you know, get out there and start practicing your video. Like Jan said, even if you don't even post them right now, just go out and practice right. and start perfecting if your that's, craft. And if that's we what will, you want to do. Yeah. And if, yeah, if that's, yeah, if that actually floats your boat. And if it doesn't, a lot of other ways to practice. Well, I'd be that. imagining you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't have some interest in it. So, <laughs> or listening right. to this podcast. So there you go. We'll more info on videos coming up. We also have our NAR settlement update uh panel uh coming up uh, in just a couple weeks now uh, you know happy to report uh anybody that's listening here we will definitely be talking about rollouts and with ideas and so far we've had no challenges we've gotten people to sign the brokerage agreement explained it most people don't aren't even aware of it you have to take the time to explain it because you just can't jump right in and you have to make sure people are clear and i did that today with a lady who's selling a, her home and she's buying under contract here and she didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, like she thought she had to pay more, like it was going to be extra, you know, or, or whatever. She just was a little bit confused, but she, I took the time to explain what her agent I think was trying to explain to her and, and let her know that. And she was like, Oh, okay. It's all good. It's just basically not here. It's over here now. Right. So people, if they know the rules, they can play the game. It's very right. fascinating actually to me. Hopefully this will be much ado about nothing. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Uh, you know what the interesting thing is? I taught a class this week with you know, brand new realtors in their orientation. And a lot of them, you know, they're learning for the first time. So they're learning the way to do it. But I feel that the feedback from people who've been out working with folks is most people 
agents, some agents included, aren't up to speed with it. So if they're not in a company where they're where they're getting updated or they don't, they're kind of hobbyists part time. Mm-hmm. They're not paying attention. They're like, what's going on, right? So we got that's the learning curve. We're going to have to get through the the part of people, clients, customers not knowing, and but also agents. So it's just like short sales. Anything else we've been through over the years, it takes a few minutes, months, weeks, months, and then everything is just the new norm. So the, we'll we'll get to the new norm eventually. All good. Ooh. Good Happy stuff. days. Yeah, exactly. Have a joyful day. Find your joy, people. Find your joy. We'll see you next week. And until then, be forever wandering, but not lost. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Hey. The whole thing is so weird. It's.